Hello and welcome back. Um, working on a Mazda Verisa doing compression test. The car couldn't start. It came off a different garage, stayed there for like two years. So I'd like to confirm the compression. That's a um, compression test I got from eBay. It comes with different adapters for different kind of um, spark plug holes. Quite a handy tool. So let's watch the compression on this car. So in number one, try to open. Crank. Okay. So that's cylinder number one compression. That's like um, 70 psi, which is uh, very low. So wait, I'll tell you to crank. Eh? I'll tell you to crank. Just wait. Crank. Okay. So this is. Um, That's in the number two. That's um, 60 psi, also very low. We go to cylinder number three. Crank. Oh wait, 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 wait. Reset. Okay. Crank. Okay. Okay. Okay, it's in the number four. Crank. Okay. So cylinder number four, that's uh, 50 psi, which is very, very low. Okay. So I decided to check the timing. So it requires removing the tablet cover, the intake manifold, the engine mountings. So the cover is out. Let's check um, how the timing was done. So that's the, um, the cam lobes. Again. Okay, 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 okay. So this timing is completely off. This timing is completely off. Okay, look at the cam lobes facing the same direction. So which means both lobes are opening at the same time. One, two, three, four, five, six. Please don't forget to subscribe and leave a comment and come back for more videos. So from here, we just um, so this kind of had to remove timing. the timing cover, the intake manifold, and many other things to access the timing chain. So just watch the video and uh, please don't forget to subscribe and leave a comment. Whoever did the timing did it, did it very very wrong. Hmm? See these mechanics that you have. Daddy. That's my son who's uh, calling me daddy daddy. That's why there's no compression. He loves being around me when I'm working. Mm. This guy cannot even start. No matter what you do, it can start. Can't start. So here we have removed the engine mounting. We need to remove the alternator. And to do that, I need to remove the intake manifold first.
the wiring harness has to come off. So this car is also missing um, a crankshaft sensor. So after everything, I'll need to order a crankshaft, a crankshaft sensor. So as you can see, the job that was done it was quite untidy. So remove that uh, vacuum pipe. So once the intake is out, you can now remove the alternator. And a few hoses over there. Quite a lot of uh, dirty silicone. So the attendant is out. You need to remove the water pump. To access the timing cover. So the timing cover is out. We need to check the timing. So it's already off. We need to remove the chain guides, tension arm, then uh, retime it properly. So that's our TDC mark. That's our TDC mark over there. Then um, we have our timing marks for the camshaft intake camshaft and you have a mark for the exhaust camshaft so the exhaust cam was okay but um, the one which was off was the intake timing camshaft so those are the marks They're supposed to align with the cylinder head The cams were quite hard to turn, the cups were not cleaned properly. So I need to work on that also. The cams are a bit tight. Okay, so that's our TDC mark for the crankshaft. So it aligns with that gear over there. And um, as can be seen, the cam lobes are now facing, almost facing, facing each other, which is um, the correct way of turning. If you remember previously, they were turning at the same time. If the cam lobe is on top, the cam shaft exhaust and the intake also will be on top. So that's the mark which aligns with the cylinder head. Lines with the other mark on the exhaust camshaft. So they are supposed to face each other. Those two marks. So the timing is done, 
I need to wait for the missing crankshaft sensor because this car was missing a crankshaft sensor. So I need to.